This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We are at the Undercard Press Conference for Dubois Joyce, April the 11th at the O2 Live and BT Sport Box Office. I'm joined by Frank Warren. Frank, little domestic cracker here, yard against Alpha. Well, it's a, it's a big domestic cracker. It's a cracking fight between the two of them. What they've had, about um, 34 fights and 20 knockouts, 29 knockouts between them. So I'm looking forward to it. It's a quality match and like, we've got a quality card here. And uh, I think it's going to be a fabulous night for the fans. There's something about, regardless of who people are fighting, and, and you could have probably sometimes got an opponent that was ranked higher, that, but no one had heard of. But when there's domestic versus domestic, everyone loves it here, don't they? Well, of course they do. But they are both, they are yeah. both ranked, in the, uh, it, by, certainly in the WBO. They're both in the rankings. So it's got an added, added um, plus with that and I think the winner of this will go into a mandatory slot or go into the number one slot because uh, they got the box off with the top four Anthony's the next one in so there we are so they got a lot to gain from it we know obviously Anthony made kind of a low-key return in Spain recently kind of just to possibly dust the cobwebs off a little bit and coming back into this fight now but uh, a big year for Anthony and hopefully by the end of the year he can secure himself a world title shot but Lyndon Arthur will have something to say about that well absolutely He's not show they're not showing up to make the numbers the both of them are really confident about this fight both of the trainers are good you know really good friends of mine Tundi and Pat they're both very confident as well of their charges so I think we've got something a bit special there with them the card also features some of your up and rising talent, such as Archie Sharp and Dennis McCann, Hamza Shiraz, Denzel Bentley. Yeah, these guys are the, are the stars of tomorrow. They definitely are the stars of tomorrow, and I think we've got some. I mean, they're going to be you know some future world champions amongst them. Um, you know, I'm really thrilled where we are with these youngsters. It's all what Queensbury is about: bringing the talent through, developing it and showing them in front of the British public. That's where we are, you know, we're British promoters. We like to show boxing, obviously, from around the world and bring the best fighters in. But primary, we want to deliver the best of British. Obviously, aside from these guys having their opponents confirmed over the next week or so, um, is the card pretty much set now? Uh, is there any more additions to it, Frank? There might be one more. We're working on it at the moment, but it is as it is now. It's a strong card. We've done over 12,500 tickets. There's only a couple of thousand tickets to, left to sell. The rest of the benches, which are all gone, um, and that was about announcing this fight. So it's going to be a big night there. It's going to be an exciting night. And obviously the main event is a, I mean, it's, it speaks for itself what it is. Seek and destroy. I keep saying all these guys, these two main, you know, this fight and, uh, and uh, Daniel and, and Joe, it's like they're, they're wrecking machines, as I keep saying. You know, you look at their KO ratios, all these guys, you know you're going to be in for fireworks. Talking to uh, Nathan Gorman, who obviously returns on the, the Josh Taylor card and made a second, he's actually tipping Joe Joyce to beat Daniel Dubois, which is quite interesting. Well, everybody's got their opinions, and that's what it's all about. That's what makes it such a great fight, that the two of them have, have, um, have, a, you know, have people uh, giving their views on both sides. Everyone's got an opinion. That's what boxing's about. But one thing's for sure, on the 11th of April, we're going to find out. Somebody's going to be right and somebody's going to be wrong. Seek and destroy. Seek and destroy. Love that. You do come up with that yourself, Frank. Of course I did. Um, is there a possibility that Tommy Fury will feature on this card, Frank? Um, I'm not sure about that yet. Uh, a few things we're working on. But, you know, we are where we are at the moment. And uh, we, we're announcing Tommy's plans uh, hopefully next week sometime. I do want to kind of drift back to three days ago. Um, Josh Taylor's fight with uh, Kong Song uh, was announced for May the 2nd in Glasgow, obviously live on BT Sport. Um, and a good undercard on that, shaping up pretty well as well. Some cracking fights on there, you know, there's some real good fights on there. And again, you know, the fans in Scotland are going to be in for, a, well, indeed for, for Britain, they're going to be in, in for a special night. Um, Josh is, uh, I mean, he's probably one of the most accomplished boxers in the country, and it's fantastic that you know, we're promoting him along with Top Rank and MTK and doing the business up there. And obviously, just going back to Nathan Gorman will make his return, but he's a couple, two or three fights away. He'll be straight back in the fold, Frank. Yeah, of course he will. You know, we, we, we've made that very clear to him that uh, we're, we're behind him and we're with him and, uh, and we will continue to, to act in his best interest. Look, these guys have to fight each other. It's not about, you know, us preferring someone. It's about getting the fights on that the fans want to see. And as I keep saying, it's not about the losers. If it was about the loser getting discarded, Derek Chisora would have been gone years and years ago. Look what we did with him. Now, Frank, we know you made... Uh the long visit to 
the lovely uh, place of Morecambe uh, a few days ago. Can you give us the highlights of your trip there, Frank? Well, the highlights of the trip was meeting with uh, Tyson, the <coughs> WBC world champion, the lineal champion, the best heavyweight on the planet, and Paris, and they took me for a, a lunch at the local uh, pub, restaurant, and uh, I had some really, really nice fish and chips. We had a good chat and so forth. He was in fine form, and uh, I'm delighted where he's at at the moment. So now we're working on the future. Obviously, he's got the fight coming up with um, Wilder, the third match, because he served, as we've been telling everybody from day one, that was what the contractual position was. He served, uh, served um, notice that he wants to fight. And in the meantime, AJ's fighting Pulev, which everybody was aware of. And in the meantime, you've got his promoter saying that he's been negotiating with Bob Arum. Uh, it's for... And he's very close to getting it on, which uh, yesterday um, we had a phone press conference where Bob said, which we all know, there is no negotiations. They haven't taken place. So someone was being very fanciful with the truth just for a change. And uh, any, any negotiations have to involve all parties sitting around the table. And if, no one's going to change that. But the man that matters is Tyson. And the other guy that matters is AJ. And everybody's got to do the best for the two fighters. It's not about anybody's ego, certainly not about my ego, it's all about getting the fights on. We try to make the fights that matter and especially want to make fights where we know our man and we're very confident that our man in Tyson is going to deliver the goods. Frank, could you just clear up a couple of things I saw online regarding uh, Fury and Wilder? So it was suggested that with the situation regarding Wilder activating his right to take this third fight, that Tyson had to agree to it as well in order to fight the third fight to happen. Is that true? No. 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 In both their contracts, that the loser had the right to invoke a rematch. So, is there the possibility that if, for example, Wilder was to win this fight, we see Wilder Fury fall? Well, there is nothing contractually bound for that, so it is what it is. But is he going to beat him? No. I was going to say, it's got no to end somewhere. Going to be, at the, I'm telling you, at this moment in time, nobody is going to beat him. You know, Jesus, this Tyson Fury, as I keep saying, he's got plan A, B, C and D. And he's only used plans A and B at the moment. Wait till he gets on C and D. Obviously, we know now that Anthony Joshua's fight with uh, Kubrat Pulev has been announced for June the 20th for Tottenham Football Ground. Um, but Frank, in regards to later on in the year, December, if, if... Tyson is to come through Wilder, Joshua is to come through Pula. Are you happy to kind of have a deal there before these fights happen even that the only way suggests gonna, that they will fight in December? The only way you're going to get a deal on is for people to sit down and talk and the people who matter and have a contractual obligations. And that is all the parties. It's not for somebody to, to even come out with rubbish that's not taken place. I mean, Bob Arum has not had those conversations. It's just not happened, and nor can he or anybody else have them unless we're all present. And just to clear up the position regarding Tyson and the British TV situation, is BT are in prime position for that. So there's a lot of things. No one wants for the fight not to happen. I'd prefer that Pulev doesn't fight AJ, and I prefer that we could go straight to it as far as Tyson's concerned, but contra contracts and other contracts, and they've got to be adhered to. What my concern is with Pulev is that he doesn't upset the apple cart. And look, you know, I'm just telling you how it is. And, um, uh, you know, AJ going is the favourite, there's no doubt about that. But it wouldn't surprise me if there was an upset. If the fight is to happen, though, is it likely that we'll see a dual broadcast across America and here as well? The position be very... That situation will only be resolved and sorted out once all the parties concerned, all the parties concerned, sit down and discuss it. It's not anybody's, anybody's choice or call to say what's happening. You know, all this rubbish that was going out the other day about we, more or less the deal's done. There ain't no deal done. It's misleading the public. Has there been talks, though, Frank? No, there hasn't. I've not had a single conversation. Bob said yesterday he's not had a conversation. And he, you know, why would he say? There's only one person saying they're having this conversation. And if I was him, I'd worry about what he's got on with Pulev. Totally disregarding something there that can uh, 
could be a, could be a problem. Could throw the spanner in the works. We want the fight. Tyson wants the fight. You know, Tyson's, you know, Tyson wants those belts back that he never lost. He, you know, he gave them up. He had to give them up at the time. He, it, he didn't want to duck anybody or fight anybody. He's a fighting man, and you know, you. I mean, look, look at last time round. You said he's going to go out, meet centre of the ring, and fight, fight. Deontay, not he's going to fight him. You know, I said he'll stop him, and I know Tyson said that. But I said that from day one he'll stop him. That's what he is. That's 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 Tyson, fighting man through and through, best heavyweight of his generation by far, and the only one who can prove any different is whoever wins that fight against AJ and Pulev. I hope it's AJ because I think that's the fight all the all the British fans want to see. We all want to see that. Of course, we want to see it. Frank, the date that's been suggested for uh, Fury Wilder 3 has been July the 18th in Las Vegas. Uh, can you make any comment on that? Is that accurate? No, not at the moment. There's a meeting, I think, taking place on Monday, and then that will be worked out and decided. What are the chances, though, it doesn't happen in the summer, as in, like, before the end of July? Well, no yet. Won't know till, till the meeting takes place. But you, I'm, I'm assuming for you and Tyson and everyone, you just you want to kind of get get that fight done in the summer so you can free up the rest of the year. Look, it's all up to Tyson. He's the guy getting in the ring. He's the guy who's in the driving seat, and it's his decision. So that's where we're at. But obviously, uh, want to get it out of the way. It's a it's a it's a contractual obligation that's got to be fulfilled one way or another. Any indication on the pay-per-view numbers for BT? Were you pleased with them? No, we haven't got. In, well, we've said a slight indication, but uh, yeah, they are what we all predicted and the way forward. So we're uh, fingers crossed that they'll increase over the period of time when we get the final number. Did you watch the final part of the Gypsy King documentary last night? I did. Yeah, yeah, very, very entertaining, and uh, yeah, it was great, wasn't it? You know, he, he, he comes across. I mean, it's great that the public see the other side of Tyson. You know. And see what he is. I mean, what you what you're seeing is what it, how it is, and uh, not just him and his family life and all the all what goes on behind the scenes. I thought it was it was, a, it was an excellent series, and I enjoyed it. I thought the footage with John Fury, especially kind of watching it, obviously at, at BT, and just the various points of just John on his own, really kind of just yeah, giving his thoughts on what was going on was brilliant as well. Well, you can imagine what's going through his his mind. Is he's dead? You know, it's your boy in the ring. You know, you're watching your boy. You know, and. Uh, how proud was he at the end? I mean, you see Tyson deliver the goods. He always had, you know, like myself, massive confidence in what Tyson was going to do. And Tyson delivered for, for, his, for himself, for his family, and, for his, and certainly for his dad. He's a very, very proud dad. All right, Frank, you've got a queue of people waiting here, so I'm not going to take too much of your time. But um, how's the podcast going, Frank? Going well? Obviously, you've had a few big names on it. Yeah, we just did today with John Burke, eh? Burko, so you'll be able to hear that today. Um, fellow gooner, like you and me, fellow Arsenal fan. So, uh, yeah, it's quite, quite interesting. You should listen to it. It's very, you know, it's, it's nice to somebody to sit down and relax, be relaxed and, and talk about their life. I'm quite enjoying it. I've got some really good names lined up in the future, which, uh, you know, it's going to get, it's gonna get better, better, better and better, and, uh, and I'm, I quite enjoy it. If you, if you get to interview any Arsenal players, make sure you give me a little cheeky text and leave the door open, Frank. Well, I might do. I might let you have. You know, I'll, I'll let you get behind the sofa and you can sort of poke, poke that over the back of the sofa yeah. and nick a bit of it. Yeah. That'll do, that'll do. I'll be disappointed. We, if get, I, we want Thierry on yeah, there. If I see Thierry Henry and you're doing a podcast and you haven't found me, Frank, there'll be absolute murders, Frank. OK, well, there's only one Thierry Henry and we'll have him there one day. Frank Warren, thank you very much from Twyfall TV. Um, yeah, we'll look forward. It's not uh, April the 11th. It's not actually that far away. Six weeks, isn't it? Less than six weeks. Five weeks. Yeah, five weeks away. So uh, it's going to be sold out, and it's going to be a great night. So don't miss it. Seek and destroy. Seek and you shall find the destroyers. Very well put. Frank Warren, thank you very much.